What exactly is going on with these new Starlink data caps? Back on November 4th, Starlink made changes to their fair use policy, which implemented data caps on top of their previously unlimited service plans. These changes are especially bad news for anyone who's using their $500 a month Starlink business service. In this video, we're gonna sort through all of these changes and I'm gonna make my own recommendations for which Starlink service I think is still worth buying into here at the start of 2023. Let's get into it. Did you know that only about 25% of people who watch this channel are actually subscribers? Subscribing not only immensely helps this channel, but it makes you feel better about yourself because you did something nice for someone else. Best of all, it's absolutely free. Let's start by going over some of the baseline costs for Starlink's various service offerings. I'm only gonna focus on the three most common services. Starlink Fixed Residential, Starlink for RVs, and Starlink Business. The upfront cost for the Fixed Residential service and Starlink for RVs is $599 for the dish plus shipping. Now Starlink Business comes with the Pro Dish and that has an upfront cost of $2,500, which is just over four times as expensive as the non-Pro Dish. Monthly recurring charges for these service plans are $110 for fixed residential, $135 for Starlink for RVs, and $500 a month for Starlink Business. Starlink for RVs has an extra feature in that you can pause your service for any month that you're not using it, whereas you don't have the option to pause service with either the fixed residential or the business plan. Now, in regards to portability, you can change the location of your fixed residential dish, though they do charge you an extra $25 a month, which brings the cost of fixed residential in line with the typically portable Starlink for RV service. I wasn't able to determine online if Starlink business is portable or not, so if anyone knows the answer to that question, please put it down in the comments below, but I suspect that it isn't. For expected internet speeds for these services, this is where everything starts to get a little bit muddy, and it seems like even Starlink doesn't really have their stuff together when it comes to all of these rules. I'm gonna try to break it down as simply as possible to the best of my understanding. So there are three main expected internet speeds listed on Starlink's site. You've got Priority Business, Priority Residential, and Best Effort. Priority business speeds are 40 to 200 megabits download, 8 to 25 megabits upload. Priority residential is 20 to 100 megabits expected download, 5 to 15 megabits upload. And then the best effort service is 5 to 50 megabits download and 2 to 10 megabits upload. Starlink for RVs is always in that best effort tier. Now, before everyone starts flaming me with comments about how you're on fixed residential and one time you did a speed test and you got 200 megabits, yeah, yeah, all right, I get it. What I'm reporting on here is the expected speeds that Starlink has published on their website. I've gotten above those speeds myself, but the published numbers are conservative numbers when compared to reality. In reality, depending on the network congestion, the time of day, your geographic location, you may get higher or lower speed test results than the expected speeds listed. Personally, with my fixed residential, I typically see speeds between 80 to 150 megabits per second. So there you have the baseline service offerings, the costs, and the expected speeds. Now let's talk about these data caps. So Starlink was originally sold as an unlimited bandwidth service, meaning that your price is the same no matter how much or how little you use the service. However, as more and more people signed up and started using Starlink, the network speeds dropped for everyone and Starlink has not put up enough satellites or installed enough ground stations to keep up with the demand. So to help mitigate this issue, they have now implemented these data caps. Now, before we go into our deep dive into what these data caps mean, I do have to stop for a second to point out what some may see as a bait and switch on the Starlink service. Personally, I'm a super early adopter of Starlink. I signed up for service when it was first announced and I received my dish in February, 2021. At that time, I was paying $99 a month. About six months later, we received the news that the price was going up to $110 a month, which I mean, okay, right? That sucks to have a monthly price increase, but the service was good. And if Starlink is literally your only internet service option, the extra 10 bucks a month isn't the end of the world. But now we're also being forced into data caps, all right? Our service is no longer unlimited. 
Here at Crosstalk, we specialize in cost-effective business phone systems. One of our offerings is a hosted PBX service where we host and maintain a phone system so that our customers don't have to worry about it. Our entry-level hosted PBX is $75 a month. Now, what if I just decided to tell all of my customers that the price is still 75 bucks a month, but now you can only make a thousand phone calls per month and any phone calls above your thousand phone call limit are gonna cost you more money. That would be a real dick move on my part and my customers would be rightfully pissed off. By the way, we're not gonna do anything like that. So be sure to check out all of our PBX offerings at crosstalksolutions.com. But that's essentially what Starlink has done here, right? With these new data caps, Starlink has told their customers that their unlimited service is now limited, which is not the agreement that we made when we signed up for the service originally. Starlink has changed the terms of the deal after the deal was made, and that's a dick move. So then how bad exactly are these data caps, right? The Starlink for RV service is unaffected. They're already on the best effort level of service. So this only affects fixed residential and Starlink business customers. For fixed residential customers, after you've hit your one terabyte of usage during your monthly service period, your priority access is dropped down to best effort level of access. Now I have to be honest about this one here. The addition of data caps for fixed residential customers really isn't the end of the world. One terabyte of data transfer in a month is a lot more than most homes use. And even if you do hit that limit, it's possible that you wouldn't even notice a difference between the priority residential service and the best effort service, depending on how saturated your Starlink service area is. I mean, it sucks and it's annoying that they did this, but again, it's really not the end of the world for fixed residential. Now I said that one terabyte of data transfer is more than most normal households use. And of course there are always going to be exceptions, people who use a ton of bandwidth, but I'm focusing on the typical household. Let me give you some examples because you may have to do some level of bandwidth mitigation in order to stay under that data cap. One major example that can push you over the data cap is if you have surveillance cameras that write their video footage to the cloud, right? So something like Google Nest or Arlo, if you have four or five of these cameras continuously writing video footage to the cloud, you're gonna easily surpass the one terabyte of transfer in a single month. Nest cameras with 24 by seven video recording to the cloud at high quality are estimated to use 400 gigabytes of bandwidth per month per camera. So in order to stay under the data cap, it's recommended that you turn on motion event uploads only, or you lower the quality of the footage that's uploading to the cloud. If you do go motion event uploading only, Arlo cameras state that the average data usage for motion triggered video events is 700 megabytes to two gigabytes of data per camera per month. So even if you had five Arlo cameras writing motion events to the cloud, you'd only be looking at about 10 gigabytes of data or 1% of your monthly Starlink bandwidth allocation, which is not really terrible at all. So for these situations, consider lowering the quality of the camera footage that's uploaded to the cloud or set your cameras to upload motion events only. That's gonna be a really good idea to save on bandwidth. Now, what about streaming services such as Netflix or Hulu or Disney Plus, right? 4K ultra quality streaming is estimated at seven gigabytes per hour. So let's say you're doing four hours of Netflix 4K streaming per day for 30 days, you would be at 840 gigabytes worth of data for the month. You're still under that one terabyte data cap, but you are getting close. Now, if that's a problem for you, then you can adjust your streaming device to only stream in HD instead of 4K to help mitigate that issue. Again, it's annoying, but it's not the end of the world. I should also point out that the data cap for priority usage is only during peak hours, which are 7 a.m. to 11 p.m., or basically almost all of the times that people are using the internet. But if there's anything that can be scheduled, such as backups of the files from your network attached storage up to a cloud backup service, those should be scheduled after 11 p.m. in order to not affect your monthly data cap. If as a fixed residential customer, you want to ensure that you always have priority access, even if you surpass your monthly data cap, you can enable that option. Unfortunately though, once enabled, it's always enabled. This isn't like a month to month as needed setting. If you turn on Starlink's ability to charge you more when you hit your data cap, 
that feature is left on until you decide to turn it off. And if you do enable always on priority access, how much are the overages, right? Starlink charges fixed residential customers 25 cents per gigabyte over the monthly data cap to retain priority access. Now let's do some quick math there, right? Let's say that hypothetically, you hit your data cap of one terabyte in 20 days out of a 30 day month. That's an average of 50 gigabytes worth of data used per day. For the final 10 days of your billing cycle, you would incur 500 gigabytes worth of overages at 25 cents per gigabyte for a total of $125 in overage fees. Your total bill for that month would be $235, which is still less than half of what business customers pay even without any overages. So now let's talk about those business customers, the ones who are really getting screwed over by these data caps. You see. If you're a business customer, not only did you pay more than four times more for your Starlink dish, and not only are you paying $500 a month for your service, but when you hit your one terabyte data cap, you aren't dropped down to best effort level service like fixed residential customers are. No, no, no. You're actually throttled down to one megabit download by one megabit upload. Let me say that again to let it sink in properly. Business customers who are paying almost five times more for their Starlink service are not dropped down to best effort levels of bandwidth once they hit that data cap. They are throttled down to one megabit download by one megabit upload, slower than DSL speeds for a service that was previously unlimited. This is who is really getting screwed over by Starlink. Business customers may very likely go over that one terabyte data cap because there's typically more users and services using the internet in a business environment, right? And not only do they not get best effort service when the data cap is hit, they also have to pay $1 per gigabyte to get back on priority access. And imagine that you're a business that has enough data usage that you hit that one terabyte data cap in a month. Do you think that one megabit down by one megabit up is gonna be an acceptable service level for the remainder of your billing cycle? Of course not, right? The business customers are going to pay the overages because they basically have no choice. So what's that gonna cost, right? Let's once again do a hypothetical example of a Starlink business customer who hits their one terabyte data cap in 20 days out of a 30 day billing cycle. That extra priority usage is gonna cost them $500 additional for a total of $1,000 in monthly service charges. Now this is absolutely ridiculous. And this is the reason why I would suggest that any Starlink business customers dump their service as soon as possible. I mean, you may as well sign up for the fixed residential or RV service instead and save your company boatloads of cash. This change is so bad for Starlink business customers that I personally would not be at all surprised to see a class action lawsuit filed against Starlink because of it. One last thing that I need to point out here, we're not entirely sure that Starlink business customers who are paying $500 a month are actually going to be given a one terabyte data cap. What do I mean by that? Well, when Starlink came out with their new fair use policy that defined all of these data caps and changes, the service plans for Starlink business were broken out into three tiers. And this seems to be the only place that these various tiers are mentioned. It's like there are new Starlink business offerings that haven't been announced yet. Take a look at this graph. It shows a 500, a 1000, and a 3000 service plan for Starlink business. The number of the service plan correlates to where the data cap is, but the throttling and overage charges are the same across all three plans. So then, which one of these is the $500 a month plan? We have no idea. Now in this video, I'm assuming that it's the middle tier with one terabyte worth of data, which means they're probably coming out with a less expensive and a more expensive plan. But it could be that the $500 a month is the lowest business plan in this chart. And business customers are going to get even further bent over the barrel with a data cap that's half of what you get with the fixed residential service. We really don't know what this means yet. So then why is Starlink screwing over their business customers so hard? I mean, that's a mystery, but my guess is that it's because they're the ones who are actually going to pay the overages. If you're a fixed residential user and you hit that data cap, your expected speeds are gonna go from 20 to 100 megabit download to five to 50 megabit download, right? So probably not a change that most home users are even gonna notice. But for businesses, going from 40 to 220 expected download speeds to one megabit per second 
is not viable to sustain your business. So they're gonna pony up the extra cash every month. I strongly urge any Starlink business customer that's gonna be affected by these data caps to cancel your service and try to get onto the fixed residential or Starlink for RV service instead. It's the right thing to do out of principle for a company that changed the deal after the fact and it'll save you a boatload of money. What do you guys think about these Starlink data caps? Let me know down in the comments below and I would love to hear your thoughts on this. If you like this video and you're looking for something to watch next, check out these videos on the right that I hand picked for you. The top video is my Starlink side hustle, which demonstrates how you can make money with your internet connection. And the bottom video is my overview of Wi-Fi 6 and whether or not you should upgrade your home or business network.